May is almost here, which means that silly season is upon us and we have our first potential mover. Adam Stern from the Sports Business Journal dropped a little bit of news on Monday afternoon when he said that Kroger could be on the move from JTG Doherty Racing at the end of the season and could potentially be headed for Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, that's interesting. Let's talk about it a little bit. So, right now, JTG Doherty Racing, Jody and Tag Geschechter, along with, along with Brad Doherty and Gordon Smith as well, are the owners of that team. But on top of that, Tag Geschechter, who is, has close ties to Procter & Gamble, close ties to the Kroger Company uh, in Cincinnati, he also owns the Brand Activation Maximizer Sponsorship Agency. So he helps sell sponsorship for other cars. And part of that deal is with Joe Gibbs Racing. Weird, right? A Chevy team selling sponsorship for a Toyota team. Very odd, but he went to the same college as J.D. Gibbs. He was close with J.D. Gibbs, so that's why he says that he does it, which is fine. It's admirable, even. But now there's talk of the sponsorship on the 47 car moving over to Gibbs next year. But not just that. If Kroger moves over to Gibbs, according to Adam Stern from people that he's talked to, Tag Schechter is also going over to Gibbs. So does he become one of the marketing officers over there? Does he run the sponsorship side of the business? Is he an equity partner? That remains to be seen. But if he goes over there, that all but takes away the 47 car of JTG Doherty Racing because half of the ownership group is now gone. And maybe they own more than half of it, right? We don't know what the breakdown is between the Geschechters, Brad Doherty, and Gordon Smith. But if they leave, that also now brings into question what happens with the 47 car. So we'll get to that in a second. Sponsorship-wise, Kroger moves over to Gibbs. They have a ton of brands that they continue to run on the 47 car. That's a major brand to land at Joe Gibbs Racing, a team that probably needs to get some sponsorship here and there. Uh, they certainly have their cars sponsored out. Don't get me wrong. They have great sponsorship over there, actually. But landing Kroger, that is a whale of a sponsor. So they would love to land that. Back to the JTG side of things. Without the Geschechters there, this team is uh, future is really up in the air. So before everybody gets in the comments, and I know they're going to, let's talk about the Dale Jr. aspect of this. So in theory, this is completely hypothetical. Let's say Brad Doherty holds on to that charter. He brings in Dale Earnhardt Jr. as an equity partner. They become co-owners in this team. That is the most likely scenario for Dale Jr. to become a NASCAR Cup Series owner, right? They already have the infrastructure there. They have the cars. They have a driver. If you want to keep that driver, highly doubt it. But, you know, if they wanted to, he's there. They have everything. Dale Jr. is not dropping $40 million on a charter and then having to go out and buy cars and all the equipment to go with it. He's just not doing it. Uh, so that pipe dream, everybody needs to just calm down. But being brought into an existing situation, one that doesn't require that much of an upfront cost, $100 million or whatever it would end up being, that could potentially be enticing. Now, is it going to happen? Who knows? This is purely speculation. I'm just saying this is the most logical scenario if he wanted to do it, not go out there and buy the two Stuart Haas racing charters, go out and buy a bunch of cars and then go racing. That's just not happening. So if Brad wants to hold on to it, then obviously the 47 car will continue to exist in whatever iteration of the next ownership group and number and sponsor and whatever else they have on it. But say the Geschechters own that charter and they want to go ahead and sell it. Well, that adds another charter to the potential pool of two that we already know about from Stuart Haas Racing, which is speculated, of course, that they're going to sell one or two of their charters. Now if there's three charters on the market, the market becomes a little bit crowded, right? The supply is a lot higher than potentially the demand is at this point. So that could really affect the market price of this. And of course, nothing's selling until the new revenue deal is agreed upon. But if it is to sell, then what happens with Ricky Stenhouse Jr.? Well, honestly... I think this might be the end of the road for him in the NASCAR Cup Series. He has three NASCAR Cup Series wins. Obviously, JTG is coming off the biggest moment in their company history just last year when they won the Daytona 500. They have two Cup wins as a company, five Xfinity wins, no wins in trucks. So they've had some success, but it makes sense if the Geschechters want to jump ship and go join Joe Gibbs Racing, let's say, because obviously they have a pedigree of success over there, a history of race wins. For Ricky, though... I just don't know of any other team that's going to take him on. Uh, there's no big time rides that are going to be open that are willing to take him in. I don't necessarily think anybody's looking at him as a guy that can be the next superstar for them. I think Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a massively talented race car driver. I think, unfortunately, he's never been put in a position to succeed in the Cup Series. And I honestly think that going back down to the Xfinity Series and finding a competitive ride down there, one where he can win races and contend for a championship, is the best case scenario for him. Of course, he's already a two-time Xfinity Series champion. Why not become a three- or four-time Xfinity Series? 
Series champion. I get it. The challenge isn't necessarily there because he's done it before, right? But at the same time, winning races down there and contending for a championship is much better than riding around in like 25th place most weekends in the Cup Series. Now, there will be some people that would maybe take a look at him, of course, but we know if that charter becomes available, I would say that most of the teams looking to add a third car, those seats are probably already spoken for. We know the 2311 Legacy Motor Club and Trackhouse are already, you know, looking at other, looking to get a charter. And if there's three charters available, well, all three of those teams could definitely buy one. But at Trackhouse, we already know that their third charter would be spoken for already. At Legacy Motor Club, you have to think that Toyota has somebody in the pipeline for them. And same thing with 2311 Racing. Could Ricky be a placeholder over there until somebody else is ready? Yeah, certainly could be. I just don't necessarily see it. This is definitely a big shakeup, though. Kroger is a major sponsor, and having them leave basically seals the deal, uh, writes the death certificate for JTG Doherty Racing, especially if the Geschecters leave because then the ownership group's gone. It's an interesting situation going on. Like I said, silly season usually picks up around the middle of May, end of May when we get to the Coke 600. A lot of people start talking, things get discussed. A lot of deals sort of start to get rolling or finalized during that week. We just got things moving a little bit sooner than normal here. So let me know in the comments what you think the future of JTG, Ricky Stenhouse, and Kroger is going forward. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter, BreakHardBlog.